If you watched Chat Show or IWA coverage from earlier this year, you might have seen these at the G&G booth. Sadly, I wasn't lucky enough to actually fly out to Vegas or Germany, but we did get these flown to us. We also got in the Cobalt Kinetics Banff rifle, but we'll take a look at that in a future video so we can focus on this pistol, as there is quite a bit to go over. Yes, these are pre-production models, so the final design is subject to change, but the good news is we're allowed to shoot them and take a closer look. Also, no, we don't have a set release date for these or the much-anticipated SMC9, but it shouldn't be too long. I'm just happy we get a sneak preview to show you guys, so big shout out to the guys at G&G. Let's get started. This is the Piranha Mark I green gas pistol, shown here in black as well as a two-tone version. Following the GTP9, this is another in-house pistol design from the folks at G&G. First impressions, I gotta say, I quite like the look. It's definitely got that future weapon aesthetic, which can be a hit or miss for some people, but compared to the GTP9, Something about this one just seems a little more grounded in reality. I like the lines of the slide and I especially like that front end. Everything looks pretty cohesive and well thought out and not like they just slapped on some random angles and cuts, which can look pretty tacky in a hurry. The entire upper is metal along with a polymer lower, unlike the polymer slide of the GTP9. Oddly enough though, this one comes in a bit lighter at 733 grams versus 762 grams of the GTP9. For way of reference, an Umarac Glock 17 comes in at 650 grams. Compared to the GTP9, which feels a bit bottom heavy, the weight is spread out very evenly on the Piranha. Center of balance is nearly perfect with a slight rear bias, but the GTP is definitely a little more back heavy. The finish is quite interesting. It's mostly a smooth matte finish, but it does have an accent line of brushed metal along with a slightly rougher texture on that barrel. It's a nice bit of contrast that you might not notice at first glance, and I think it makes the black one even more attractive than the two-tone, which might have a bit too much contrast, but to each their own. The main feature on this pistol is that split slide design, meaning only the rear half of the slide moves back. Generally, this means a faster cyclic rate due to that lower slide weight, and some split slide designs like this one have a semi-fixed barrel, which should aid in accuracy. One downside with split slides is a lack of surface area to grab onto, and the serrations are pretty shallow as it is. However, the recoil spring is light enough that it was never really a problem, and it is possible to press check from the front. Deeper and larger serrations would be nice, along with some serrations up front for the press checkers. When I saw this little screw underneath the barrel, I was worried you had to remove the screw to field strip the gun. Luckily, it's just a brace that slides off with the whole upper. To field strip, pop out the mag, pull the slide until you can rotate the takedown lever. It's actually ambidextrous, which is pretty unique, and the whole upper slides right off. While we're inside, let's take a quick look at the internals. Comparing lowers, we can see the similarities to the GTP9. We've seen good reliability with the GTP, so hopefully we can expect the same with this one. There's also a lot less material at the front and much smaller slide rails thanks to that split slide, which probably contributes to that overall lighter weight. Comparing uppers, check out how small the spring guide is. It's a tiny spring, but I guess that's all you need for such little slide weight. The hop-up unit is the same design, which was one of my favorite things about the GTP. Basically, the entire unit is a long hop-up arm, but the adjustment is clicky and really precise, and I was really impressed with the GTP's accuracy. It's adjusted through the front, but instead of a tool stored in the back strap, it's a little bullet keychain that unfortunately we don't have to show you. The nozzle has the same whirl valve that helps with gas efficiency, and we'll take a look at efficiency in a bit, but check out the front of the nozzle. It looks like a gas blowback rifle bolt, and it actually interfaces with the barrel, which in theory centers the barrel for even more consistency. Looking at build quality, the shake test isn't perfect with some noise from the magazine, but for a metal slide, it's definitely on the better side of average. Slide play is excellent with almost no movement, but it still slides along effortlessly. Barrel play is amazing with basically no movement in any direction. Magazine fitment is acceptable, and the magazine inserts very smoothly and notches in with a really nice click. 
The magazine itself is similar to the GTPs with a low profile metal feed lip, but it is a bit larger and not compatible, holding 24 shots instead of 22. Up top, they ditched the weird but admittedly very good sights on the GTP9 for classic white three dots, which no one can really complain about. The rear sights are raised enough so you can use it to help rack the slide. The slide release is super low profile, but perfectly placed for your thumb. It's ambidextrous, but it's worth noting that it actually catches on both sides of the slide, making it a bit more durable long term. Still, I'm glad to see it's power stroke friendly. The mag release is triangular with a classic push button activation. It's not full time ambidextrous like the downwards GTP release, but it's also not as far of a reach for your thumb. It's easy to flip to the other side should you need it. The grip lacks back straps this time, but in the hands, I definitely prefer this one. They filled out the back of the grip a bit more and it sits much nicer in my hands. The texturing isn't as aggressive as on the GTP and without finger grooves, it's a bit on the slippery side, but I'd take a well-fitting grip over texture any day. The trigger guard is nice and wide with a nice undercut that rests onto your middle finger. I like that there's a cutout which is perfect to rest your index finger on. Overall, I think g, &G really nailed the ergonomics with this pistol. Except for one thing. Let's talk about that trigger. Okay, it looks pretty cool with a unique safety right on the trigger, and this one has a flat face instead of that annoying trigger blade. But like other trigger safeties, the trigger pull definitely suffers. Here's what I mean. First off, side to side play would be acceptable, but the jointed bottom half makes it even worse. The first two millimeters is a very soft pull, then you get to the actual take up where there's another three millimeters of travel and then you hit the wall, which has another two millimeters of travel until you finally get that break. The break itself is very light and it does feel clean, but there is a bit of over travel. Reset is where the wall begins and it does have a nice tactile click to it. To be clear, once you get to the wall, it's a decent trigger, but everything before it just makes it feel sloppy. Overall, another trigger that could be so much more, but dragged down by a trigger safety. g, &G I get that you want to innovate, but at least give us the option to buy a one piece version of this trigger, maybe even with a set screw to adjust for over travel. I definitely buy one. Onto the range now, velocity is right about 295, but power is extremely consistent for a gas pistol. Scratch that, this is consistent even for APG standards. As far as efficiency goes, let's compare it to the GTP9. The GTP manages 77 shots on one fill, which is pretty impressive on its own. The Piranha manages an astounding 127 shots on one fill, or just more than five magazines worth. Remember, this is shooting slowly, so don't expect the same on the field, but it's safe to say that this is the Prius of gas blowbacks. Shooting some targets, first impressions are really good. Like the GTP, the new hop-up system seems to be working pretty well, and I actually finally broke the middle hanger with four hits in a row. But naturally, I wasn't filming. You'll just have to take my word for it though, but this thing is very impressively accurate. Double taps and triple taps are super quick and the gun shoots really flat. I still don't love that trigger, but it's pretty easy to get used to and everything else on this pistol feels really well thought out. As far as shooting feel goes, it feels pretty similar to the GTP. It makes sense with the same gas system and about the same slide mass, but perhaps it's the tighter slide play, the Piranha feels a touch more refined. I wouldn't call either a particularly hard kick, but it still definitely feels good to shoot. And there you have it, an up close sneak preview for the upcoming Piranha Mark 1. I. I think there's definitely more going for this gun than against, and I'm pretty excited for this new release. I was really impressed with that build quality, the hop up system, and the gas efficiency speaks for itself. Now, it might not look like a pistol that you know, but in the hands, it really does feel as good as any. You're not making a compromise for a unique look. I only hope g, &G releases hard holsters specific to this gun and maybe take a look at refining that trigger. As always, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and we'll catch you on the next one.